Glutes help us walk upright, run, climb stairs, and so much more. They're the biggest and most powerful muscles in our body, but we kind of forgot how to use them, literally. There's a thing called gluteal amnesia, and it happens when we sit most of the time during our day, over a longer period of time, or generally due to being physically inactive. We tell our body we don't quite feel like using our glutes, so it finds its own way to compensate for that. For example, when you do squats or some other movements that include hip extension where the glutes are supposed to help, other muscles take the lead. So muscles like the ones in your lower back and hamstrings take the work. That's a clear message to your glutes. Yep, you can continue sleeping. Others will do your job. Let's wake them up. Glute Bridge Lie down with your back on the floor. Slide your feet back in closer to your knees. Put both your knees and feet hip-width apart. Relax your shoulders and head. Now you can cross your arms over your chest, just to take them out of this exercise. Tilt your pelvis towards yourself. Is your lower back flat now? Good, because it shouldn't be arched away or pressed into the floor. This is a neutral position. Now lift your hips up off the floor before you lift your back. Squeeze your glutes while they're up. Slowly go back down to the floor. When going up, your hips go first and back second. And when going down, it's the opposite. Back first, then the hips. Glute bridge is a simple exercise to start with even if you're not in such a good shape. Plus, it's great for activating your glutes. You can start without any additional weights. Just your body is enough. You got your stopwatch? Excellent. We'll do this for one minute. Moving to the next, donkey kicks. Get on all fours. Keep your hands directly under the shoulders while the knees are under your hips. Tuck the chin a little bit so that the back part of your neck is facing the ceiling. Try to keep your back flat. Time to get your lower abdominals to work, but without rounding your spine. Keep your legs in a 90 degree bend in your knees. Now, exhale and slowly lift your right leg back so your foot is lined with the ceiling. Return to the starting position. Don't let your thigh go higher than your torso. It can lead to compensation of your lower back. Also, the max height you should go is right before your hips begin to rotate or back starts to arch. 30 seconds on the right. and 30 seconds on the left side. Clamshells. Lie on one side, 
Keep your legs and shoulders stacked and bend your knees at a 45 degree angle. Keep your feet stacked up too. Now, rest your head on the arm below you. Keep your frame steady with your top arm. Let your hips be stacked too, since you might feel your top hip rocking backward during this exercise. Keep your feet together and raise the upper knee as high as possible, but without shifting your pelvis or hips. And make sure your lower leg stays on the floor. Stop for a second and then return the upper leg to the starting position. It's important to keep your abs engaged. Pull your belly in to do that, because it will help you stabilize your pelvis and spine. We'll do this for one minute, 30 seconds on one side and 30 on the other. No lower body workout can go without at least some variation of the squat. Here's the basic version you can do with your body weight only. Take a nice wide stance with your feet shoulder width apart. Put your hands out in front for better balance. And sit back as if there was a chair behind you. Do it slowly when going down to control your movement better. Your knees should stay behind the toes. Your chest should be up. Look in front of you to keep the position with the back straight. When you're going up, Make it faster than going down. With squats, you're strengthening the muscles around your knees and hips. Start your stopwatch and try to do squats for one minute. The bird dog exercise. Go on all fours again. Take the tabletop position. Let your knees be under your hips while your hands are under the shoulders. Engage your abdominal muscles to keep your spine neutral. Don't let it curve. Now, draw the shoulder blades together. First, raise your right arm and left leg at the same time. Keep your hips and shoulders parallel to the floor while doing it. Tuck the chin into your chest so you can gaze down at the floor and stretch your neck. Keep its back in line with the spine. Hold it like that for a couple of seconds, then go back to the starting position. Do the same with your left arm and right leg. That's one round. The important thing here is to try not to rotate your pelvis and keep your hips level. Don't lift your leg too high and don't allow your chest to go down. Your shoulder blades should be back and away from your ears. Move slowly so you can control your body better. Breathe evenly. Set your stopwatch for one minute.
While sit-ups may be the go-to ab workout, they're not the best. 1. Sit-ups target more than just abs, but require perfect form, which is difficult for beginners. 2. They are super easy to cheat at. And 3. Doing them incorrectly can easily cause back pain. They're a less safe version of a crunch. To do a crunch, lie on your back, bend your knees so your feet are flat on the floor. Put your hands behind your head with your fingertips touching each other and lift your head and shoulders off the mat in a smooth motion. Make sure your lower back is pressed to the floor the whole time. Then lower yourself back down and repeat. Another good ab exercise for beginners is the bird dog. Simply kneel with your knees hip width apart and hands firmly on the ground about shoulder width apart. Lift one hand and the opposite knee just off the floor while balancing on the other hand and knee. Make sure to keep your weight centered. While this is a good move, it's lower down on our list as it also helps your lower back, glutes and thighs. It's not just an isolated ab workout. The V-Up combines torso movement from sit-ups with extended legs. It's great for balance, mobility and quad strength. Lie on your back, then fully extend your arms and legs upwards to form a V-shape. Think of it as though you're trying to fold yourself in half while balancing on your pelvis. Next up, Beast Hold. For this, place your arms shoulder width apart with your knees bent on the ground. Then engage your core. Raise your knees off the ground, keeping your feet on the floor. Then see how long you can hold this position. Try a minute to start. To make this more advanced, you can also crawl back and forth while in this position. Our next exercise is the hollow rock. Lie on your back with your arms over your head. Then crunch your abs by raising your legs and arms from the floor. Shift your weight so that you rock backwards and forwards slightly while maintaining the hollow position. Make sure not to uncrunch your abs for this one. We've all heard of the plank, and it is effective, which is why it makes it on this list. It also helps strengthen your arms, hips, and quads. So if you're looking for just a core exercise, the plank might not be your best option. The hover is another great exercise similar to the plank. For this one though, you'll be resting on your elbows, rather than being in a push-up position. A handy bit of equipment is to have an ab wheel or ab roller. Simply bend your knees and tense your core. Then just roll the wheel out in front of you by extending your arms. The wheel is great as it targets multiple muscles within the core at different angles. Next up is the Russian twist. Start by sitting on the floor and bringing your legs straight out. Then lean back so that your torso and legs form a broad angle. Then, using your core to balance, twist your torso from side to side without moving your legs. Make sure to avoid just moving your arms from one side to the other though. You should be rotating your whole upper body from left to right. Next, the candle raise. Lying on your back, roll back onto your shoulders and lift your hips and legs into the air. Your abs will be activated when you push up. The dead bug exercise is another popular way to strengthen your core and improve stability. Lie on your back with your feet and hips at 90 degree angles. Extend your arms directly up in the air. Start by lowering your left arm and extending your right leg. Stop both just before they touch the ground. Then return to your starting position and repeat to the other side. The longer you extend your legs, the more effective the exercise. To make it even more effective, lift your shoulders off the ground too. The mountain climber is a core training staple. You need enough abdominal strength to hold yourself in a basic plank position. Ensure your pelvis is tilted backwards so that you're alternately bringing each knee to your chest. Think of a sprinter starting a race. Remember with this one that if your pelvis isn't extended correctly, your abs won't be properly worked out. Another great exercise for beginners is the simple but effective heel tap. In a static crunch position, stretch out your arms and bend your body so that you alternately tap each heel. It can help tighten the entire side ab wall and is perfect for those looking to build a six pack. For our next exercise, the reverse crunch. Start lying down with your arms by your sides, then raise your legs and make sure your knees are bent at a 90 degree angle. 
Breathe out. Bring your knees up towards your chest and raise your hips off the floor. Hold the position, then slowly lower your legs back to your starting point. Avoid arching your back, as it's important to keep the tension at every point. The long lever plank is a better version of the traditional plank. For this one, bring your feet and elbows together. Then walk your feet backwards so that your elbows are almost at your forehead. Then, like with other planks, just hold this position for as long as you can. So if you don't have an opportunity to head to the gym, worry not. All you need to fire up your muscles is a pillow and some flat surface to lie on. Super Person Strength Exercise Lie down on your stomach so that your belly button touches the middle of the mat and put a pillow between your knees. Take a deep breath. On exhale, press your ankles together, squeeze your glutes, and lift your legs. Remember to keep them straight. Hold for 5 to 10 seconds, then relax your body for the same amount of time. Do 5 reps. This exercise will prevent your spine from curling forward and strengthen your back, legs, and glutes. Bridge with squeeze. Lie down on your back with your legs bent and the pillow between your knees. Push your body up into a bridge. Your ribs should be aligned with your pelvis. Stay in this position and slowly squeeze the pillow 20 times. Then lower your body down to the mat. Bring your knees to your chest. It'll help you relax your back. Repeat twice for a total of three sets. This exercise will tone your inner thighs, abs, and glutes. Reverse crunches. Lie face up on your gym mat and hold a pillow between your knees. Start raising your legs up until the angle is 90 degrees. Then lift your hips off the floor. Lower your legs back to the mat as slowly and carefully as you can. Repeat this movement 10 times. It'll strengthen your abs and will help you to have better posture. Roll down with knee squeeze. Sit down on a firm sofa with your knees bent, feet flat on the couch cushion, and your back straight. Place a throw pillow between your knees. Lean back, grasping the back of your thighs just below the knees. Your chin should be tucked toward your chest. Squeeze the pillow and slowly roll down until your arms are straight. Your head should be almost touching the couch cushion behind you. Hold this position for 4 to 5 deep breaths, then slowly roll back up. Do 8 to 10 reps. This exercise works your abs and inner thighs. Pigeon Pose Put a pillow on the floor and kneel down in a tabletop position over it. Slowly and carefully, place one knee under your chest and leave your other leg straight behind you. Walk your hands forward to lift your head, chest, and shoulders. Relax your arms on the pillow. Close your eyes and relax in this position for 3 minutes, then switch legs. This exercise will help you stretch the hip area improve your posture, and even become less stressed. Hip Knee Pillow Press Lie down on the floor with your toes pointed straight ahead and your feet flat on the floor. Your thighs should be in alignment with your hips, your knees bent at 90 degrees and positioned over your feet. Place a firm pillow between your knees and squeeze it for 10 seconds before relaxing. Do at least 10 reps. If it feels more comfortable, you can do this exercise while sitting on a chair. It'll help you work your inner thigh muscles and strengthen your knees. Pillow Slides Get in a push-up position with your knees on a pillow and a towel underneath your both hands. Engage your core and slide the towel out in front of you until your back is straight. Return to the starting position by squeezing your muscles. Do 8 to 10 reps. This is a great exercise to strengthen your core and get some awesome abs. Kneeling Ankle Squeezes Place a chair or box in front of you and put your hands on top of it. It'll help you keep your balance. Ideally, the chair or box should come up to your waist. Position the chair so that your arms touch it naturally and you don't have to stretch to reach it. Press your ankles together and flex your glutes. Hold on for about 10 seconds and do at least 15 reps. 
This exercise strengthens your glutes and ankle muscles. But pillows aren't the only equipment you can find lying around in your apartment. I mean, look at that table. Clapping push-ups. First of all, make sure your table is sturdy enough and won't slide away once you push off of it. Don't use any foldable or coffee tables. Put your hands on the edge of the table and walk your feet back. You should be in an inclined push-up position. Lower yourself to do a push-up and then push off the table so that your hands leave its surface. Clap your hands, then brace yourself and return to the starting position. Do 10 reps. If you're not comfortable with the whole clapping situation, just do good old incline push-ups. Now, how about that chair? Step-ups to reverse lunges. Put a sturdy chair in front of you. Place your right foot on top of it. Step up and straighten your right leg. Your left leg should be bent at a 90-degree angle. Step off the chair, send your right leg behind you, and lower into a lunge. Return to the starting position and switch legs. Do 10 to 15 reps. Now, why don't you use some paper plates? Reverse lunges to lateral lunges. Place a paper plate under your sliding foot. That's the one that will go behind you. Lower yourself into a reverse lunge. Then drag the paper plate, along with your foot, up to the starting position. From here, move the plate and your foot into a side lunge. Change sides after each 30 seconds. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.